to Booze Reviews in Black and White. I'm D'Amico. This is Brittany, and that is Bane. Uh, we have some fun white wines for you today. Uh, yeah, let's just jump into them. Forget all the small talk. Let's roll. No <laughs> small what talk today. What are we drinking? Uh, Saracena Un Oak Chardonnay. 90% uh, Chardonnay and 10%... Viognier. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Where's this from? California. 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 Yes. California. Uh, we're looking at some young wines today too. I think this one is. Uh, is this 2010? Yeah. yeah that's... So it's pretty pretty young tasting, and by that I mean kind of acidic tasting. Mm -hmm. And it's on oak, so it's aged in probably stainless steel. Very acidic. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Massive, massive citrus. I tell you what, for those mm -hmm. VA lovers out there, this is, uh, <clears throat> you're going to like this, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely the VA is uh, stepping forward here. It's uh, showing up very bold, even for 10%. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of pear in a the mid palate. Of pear, yep. Tons of like a really um, ripe pear. Mm -hmm. Adds a lot, of to the, a lot of floral to the mix. Mm -hmm. Very decent. What are you going to give it? Um, <clears throat> it depends. By itself, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to throw a couple wine pairings out with this first. Mm. Definitely some cheese. Um, fatty, fatty, fatty cheese. Um, actually, you could probably do some fried chicken, some french fries, mm -hmm. mm. some greasy pizza. Potato chip? Potato chips for oh, yeah. sure. Um, I'd even throw it on the table for Thanksgiving with the turkey, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe uh, appetizers. You know, have everyone come over, have your appetizers set up, throw this out there. This would work well. I'd probably give this one 82. Oh, all right. What do you think of Brittany? I think I'm gonna go a little bit higher than that. I really like the Viognier. I love the pear. It's really fruit forward. Uh, that's something I love about Anouk Chardonnay. I just I get so sick of that really heavy wood, yeah. buttery flavor. That this is so much more I agree. Uh, bright and crisp. I like a good crisp wine in fall. So I'm gonna say eighty six. Alright, not too bad. What about you? The slide right in the middle of you two. Probably put it at about eighty four. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you had it right, D'Amico. Um, anything with fat, uh, this one is going to work well for sure. Uh, so, yeah, greasy, bring on the greasy foods. Uh, bacon wrapped scallops. Oh, stop that. Bacon wrapped scallops, yes. that's it. This is your bacon wrapped scallop wine. I, I would almost say that uh, this wine, and I hope the first is going to be the same, uh, would make a great epitaph, you know, something yeah. after the fact. Uh, mm -hmm. Clean up your palate a little bit because it is definitely uh, clean and crisp. Very much so. Mm -hmm. What do we got next? Next is the Three Brooms, Marlboro. Where Where should I go? Please Marlboro. do. What is it? Uh, Sauvignon Blanc? It is a Sauvignon Blanc from oh, Marlboro no. region of New Zealand. And not only is it a Marlboro, which tends to be more crisp and, I know, fruity. Slutty is what they are. <laughs> they are kind of slutty. Um, All up in your business. Yes. Uh, it is a 2010. So super, like... Oh, it's gonna be so acidic, so much. I don't know why I just poured so much. I because you like the slutty. I really, I, <laughs> I don't mind the slutty. I love the slutty, uh, but I hate crap. New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. And oh, I do wow. too. I I'm already smelling whoa, it when whoa, it came out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I guess I'm one of those people that buy buys into the New Zealand uh, Sauvignon Blancs. I I tend to like them. Uh, Everyone I've had, I thought was okay or great. Mm. So, I don't know. It's I just don't like them because they all taste the same. Oh, well, I guess that is true. This, however, is a completely different animal on the nose. I can smell it. I don't even have to put it I've near got, my nose. It's I get so... the grass and the gooseberry. Mm -hmm. But, like... Jalapeno pepper juice. Uh, oh my god, yeah, it's 
pickle, true. pickle jalapenos in the jar. Holy you pick, mm -hmm. you open it, nice sniff word. it. That's exactly what this smells. Boom! He nailed it. I yeah. mean, that is wow. That is perfect. Mm -hmm. You hit the nail on the head there. Okay. Now I can't get anything else, so. <laughs> like, I'm kind of nervous to drink jalapeno juice right yeah. now, but I'm going to give it a shot. Is, is this a joke? Mm. No, this, this is up. a... Mm. It's got that jalapeno flavor as well, <clears throat> without the the spice, obviously, the pepper. Mm. Um, the grass still comes through, but not as much of that gooseberry as I expected. Yeah, I'm getting a little greens, a little, mm -hmm. um, was it like some cucumber type things in there? Sure. It keeps mm -hmm. it fresh, yeah, you know, not yeah. too uh, hot, I guess. Big acid, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm getting a ton of hay. Yeah. Lots and lots of hay and, um, and it's like pickled. Um, something really sour, actually. Really sour. Mm. Uh, Very finish, right? Water. Very mouth water. Yeah, but definitely kind of flat to the finish not a whole lot of structure it's common for these wines um, mm -hmm. they are fun to drink and try and but I'm just not a huge fan of the whole Marlboro situation I'm gonna go ahead and recant my earlier statements about hating or not liking cuz I, I shouldn't throw a blanket terms like that, general statements like that. Yeah, what, um, what did we learn on the last episode? Yeah, don't judging, don't judging judge a book by, by its cover. <clears throat> this is fantastic. Um, I am seeing all sorts of foods to pair with this. Um, any salad you can think of. Uh, cheese, of course. Um, turkey day, anything with sage in it. Um, you want to add a little, you know, something, you know, maybe some nachos with, with some jalapenos on top. <laughs> Why not, man? Honestly, yeah, that you is what totally I'm totally pull that off with this. I'm going to mm, tell them you right now. Those little ham roll-ups, right? Put the ham, the cream cheese, the pickle, you roll it up, you cut it, little appetizer. Have you ever had that? Is that a Minnesota thing? It's a Minnesota thing. <laughs> Grandma, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is that wine. This is a great wine for a little tiny handmade Minnesota tater tot hot dish would be good. I'm telling you, this is a Minnesota. I can see deal. where you're going with that. With it, because it'll cut that, through. But... You've never had the pickles with the ham? Oh my god, they're I so good. I don't eat Minnesota food. Okay, <laughs> he's not from here. So I'm. I, I would definitely it cuts through the salt of some of those foods. I think it would be good for. Since we're on Minnesota and food, um, would you pair this with a hot dish? <laughs> I absolutely would. I would. That's casseroles to all the normal no, folk yeah, out there. Yeah, I guess. It's a hot dish, and I would do it. I oh totally would. Goodness. Tater tot with the green beans. I'm all about it. What about you? What do you think? Lunafisk. No, oh, I'm just totally kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. Uh, yeah, no, I, I was on D'Amico, uh, went to D'Amico on this. Uh, straight Latin foods. I think uh, this would pair just nicely with some uh, braised beef. Mm. Um, some uh, sauces with a kick, uh, definitely oh, sure. stand up, but a little bit parallel, obviously. Uh, you kind of want your wines to bounce, you know, off your food, but... Uh, not always. Not always, but uh, yeah, this is this is definitely one of those wines that, you know, naturally would go with uh, a good Latin dish. Mm -hmm. I'm about to naturally have another sip. Oh, my oh, goodness crazy. gracious. We got, really, we really got things to do. We got Riesling to pour right oh, now. Oh, my bad. Go ahead. Pour it. <laughs> okay, I will. You know? Moving on, we got a Fisk mm. Prickly. Oh, did we not? We didn't rate. Oh, all right. That's well, why I need another splash. Can read his Winding thoughts. back. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and rate the uh, three brooms. I'm going to totally give this one a uh, high 80s. Um, I, I don't think the structure is all there, but it's got some characteristics that are kind of fun, different, uh, definitely different. Um, 87? Yeah, 87. What do you got, Brittany? I'm going to go 83, maybe. In terms of uh, Marlboro, it's it's not bad the way that it kind of cuts through its own um, green unripeness. Very sour patch kids, though. I don't... Hmm. I'm just not a huge fan. Don't care for them very much, so 83. I um, <clears throat> prejudged it once I found out it was a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Uh, I do apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, 
this wine and unfortunately it's going to be forever immortalized <laughs> on video uh i'm going to give this sauvignon blanc from new zealand 91 points the acid is wow. there the structure is not there but it's getting most of that uh rating for me because of the uniqueness of very much so the different uh the, the the jalapeno i mean seriously guys if you find this try it tell me what you think um I think this could be a really fun wine to pair with a lot of different foods. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Well, moving on, we got the Frisk Prickly. And that's uh, Riesling, of course. Uh, we're looking at uh, 90 or so plus Riesling, and it's finished off with Muscato. Um, you get a little effervescence with this as well. Um, I've had this one, and I, I can tell you right away, uh, for those people who like maybe like a dry Gewürztraminer demeanor but are kind of dabbling in the uh, sparkling sweet wines, I think this is going to be for you. Um, I hope you guys like this as much as I do. It's effervescent when I poured it already. It looks I very beautiful. I can see the bubbles. In. Yep, and that's always very pretty ladies' night out kind of thing. Um, it, it looks like a nice wine. It is Australian, so we're hoping to... An Australian Riesling? An Australian Riesling. Oh, yeah, I see it's from Victoria. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Looking forward to uh -oh. some tropicalness, <laughs> I was hoping. Well, your mind's been changed already a few times today. <laughs> True. Let's try I, shouldn't, give it a I, shot. Shouldn't, I shouldn't diss the down under, man. Mm mm. You know better. Nose is a little bit lacking um, at first sniff. I can't believe I said that again, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not much there. So this wine didn't have you at first sniff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I when a help. wine does, does it say that to you? You had me at first sniff. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore them. <laughs> Do you lay at night with your bottle of wine? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Was it love at first sniff? <laughs> so plenty of minerals. Plenty of Big rocky, time minerals. Definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't taste like a, or smell like a salty mineral though, like a Sancerre or anything no. like that. It's going to be surprising, I think. I'm going to... Yeah, guess I don't it. smell any fruit, anything mm -hmm. outside of the minerality. Mm -mm. Massive blue stone. And yep, I was going to say river wet, rocks. wet stone is, hits it right on the head. Not too sweet. Um, definitely put it at uh, lightly sweeted, mm -hmm. sweetened, I guess, wine. Um, it's not bad. I I like it. Uh, and you know what I was saying before with the Gewürztraminers <clears throat> transferring into uh, Riesling, you get that little Moscato in there. You get that wet stone, the minerality, those types of characteristics. I think are are good for somebody who's. Uh, you know, changing or maybe even getting into a sweeter style wine. Maybe you don't want to jump into something that's like heavy sweet, uh, yeah. getting into something just slightly sweet. This would be a good one for you. I'm still going to call it a ladies' night wine. I think that uh, women that get together and <clears throat> do like stitching bitches or just hang out and have glasses of wine will really this will appeal to them because there's such a wide variety of, of uh wine drinkers that tend to get around those tables and this is a pr I think it would please everybody I think that people that have more advanced palates would appreciate the uh, the Riesling aspect of it and the terroir that it's from but there is enough sugar that people that are just starting to like wine would probably like it uh, not a lot of structure though not a lot of uh, depth uh, not a lot of layers just a fun have a sip or two wine here it comes. Yep. <laughs> I see those facial expressions over there. Um, I am a huge fan of Rieslings. Um, I know a lot of people out there that are on the snobby side of things and like, I don't drink sweet wine. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you've probably never had a really good Riesling. Uh, yeah. Rieslings are some of the most complex wines on the planet, seriously. Um, Granted, you're going to spend 30, 40, 50 bucks and up uh, to get that complexity, uh, but they can produce some pretty well made uh, wines from that grape. Um, this one is not one of them to me. Um, 
I like the acid. It's just not enough. That sweetness to me tastes artificial. Um, Splenda. Like somebody threw a, not artificial sweetener, because um, I would seriously just throw this bottle across the room. Um, but it's almost like someone took a, a dry white wine and put a spoonful of sugar in it and stirred mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I think it's due to not having the acid, the acidic backbone that I'm used to having with a lot of Rieslings. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see the prickly in this at all. Um, no, and that's kind of a bummer because I was excited really, for that. Yeah. A little, I like a prickly Riesling. Uh, yeah. It's a good way to say it. And uh, when you get a prickly Riesling, you're expecting something that has more acid than like a late harvest Riesling, right. which is picked later in the season. A lot, a lot sweeter. more sweet, mm -hmm. a lot more syrup. Um, but this is definitely falls short of the prickly name, I think. Yeah. But with that said, again, food pairings, um, salty foods, uh, seriously, if you never had a reason to sit down with tater tots and french fries and have <laughs> wine with them, do it. Um, <laughs> seriously, uh, I probably wouldn't go fish, but, uh, you know, popcorn shrimp, you know, the cheap frozen crap you get in the, at the grocery store or whatever. You know, you just throw it in the oven, bake yep. it off, and need something to go with it. Mm -hmm. I would probably go with this or Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, boy. I would like it with a cured meat. Like oh. Prosciutto would be good, I think. Or even a cured fish. The saltiness. Uh, yeah, the saltiness that comes out of those cured <clears throat> meats, uh, I think would really kind of balance the amount of sugar. And you're right, there are a lot of winemakers that will just kind of straight up dump sugar yeah. in their vats, and that's um, something that you hope doesn't happen to the wines you drink, but... It does. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> there's, there's a good reason for that, though. We'll get we'll get into a later uh, mm -hmm. episode and we'll just do some reasonings. We'll show you that uh, reasonings can be aged, too, yeah. which mm -hmm. is pretty interesting. Um, uh, jumping in here, I, I know you guys are getting it. I definitely agree with you. Um, I'm going to rate this thing probably an 83. 83. Um, again, you know, maybe after a meal or something like that for a light aperitif. Mm -hmm. uh, aperitif there. Uh, also, I think maybe it would go with a creamy dessert. Uh, maybe like a cheesecake. Or like a, even a meringue. Not like a key lime meringue, yeah. but something a little heavier. Sure. Um, like I don't a want pumpkin pie cheesecake even Ooh, with a little yeah. topping Something on it. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. well, that would be fun with this. Yeah. I would say, I would probably say like 84 is how I feel about this wine. Okay. That's how I feel. What about you? <laughs> I'm feeling a 79 all the way around. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to give this wine an 80. Uh, you know, I'm going to give it a 79 plus. Um, <laughs> it tried. It just, you know, it tried. <laughs> once, I mean, they took such bold, you know, uh, font and put prickling on there and it's just not prickly. I'm sorry. There are uh, things that you expect when you see the word prickly. For sure. You yeah. know, a lot of people buy their wines based on the label, so, mm -hmm. you oh, know. Definitely. <laughs> just like we would have never guessed. Three Bruno juice. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man, that three wine rooms. is killer. I'm there. <laughs> Expectations out of that were way off kilter. Right. Oh, man. All right. Well, uh, there you go. Uh, a couple so of white wines for you. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, man. That's against the law in several states. <laughs> Let's try this. But he's going to give it a shot. This video is going to get bumped off the internet. Like, right <laughs> <on>. <laughs> what are you thinking? I'm thinking you just put some stuff together. I ruined the three brooms. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe. <clears throat> From all of us, have a good one. Cheers.